Hello everyone, I'm Raphael and welcome to Network Engineer Pro. In this video, I'll be explaining DHCP for IPv4 and its role within a network. I'll also talk about DHCP relays, aka the IP helper, and I'll show you how to configure DHCP on a Cisco device like a router or a switch live on the CLI. Let's get right into it. DHCP stands for the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, and its purpose is to dynamically assign IP addresses to devices on the network. In addition to the IP address, hosts will also be provided with other network configuration, such as the subnet mask, gateway, DNS server, lease times, and more. A device on a network without an IP address is pretty much useless. You could sit there and assign IP addresses statically one by one, but as the network grows, it becomes hard to manage. It's a lot of work, especially if you have hundreds or even thousands of hosts connecting to the network. Now, there are cases where static IPs are preferred, like certain servers, IP addresses on routers and firewalls and things like that, but in most cases, it's perfectly fine to use DHCP, especially for client desktops, laptops, BYOD devices, and more. Okay, so how does DHCP automatically hand out IP addresses to the clients? Well, to start off, for IPv4, DHCP uses UDP, the User Datagram Protocol, and specifically well-known ports 67 and 68. Messages from the client to the DHCP server have a UDP source port of 68 and a destination port of 67. Messages from the DHCP server to the client have a UDP source port of 67 and a destination port of 68. The most important thing about DHCP is the process commonly referred to as DORA. No, not that DORA. DORA, the acronym for Discover, Offer, Request, and Acknowledge. Let's take a look at this diagram. All right, so we have a PC on the left, we have a switch in the middle, and we have a DHCP server on the right. The DHCP server has an IP address of 192.168.1.200 and a MAC address of all Bs. The PC does not have an IP address yet, that's what we're trying to accomplish, but it does have a MAC address of all A's. So what happens is that the PC turns on, it boots up, it realizes it's been connected to a network like a wired network or wireless, and the NIC is set to DHCP. So the client will initiate step one, which is to send a discover message. DHCP discover message is basically saying, hey, is there a DHCP server out there? Can someone please help me out? I need an IP address. The layer two and layer three information for the DHCP discover message looks like this. The source MAC address is going to be that of the PC, which is all A's. The destination MAC address is going to be all F's, which is a broadcast. What does the switch do when it receives an Ethernet frame with a destination MAC address of all F's? It's going to flood it out of every single port except the one it arrived on. The source IP address is going to be 0, .0, .0, .0. The reason it's all zeros is because the client doesn't have an IP address yet, but it can't send data on the network without putting a source IP address in the source IP address field, so it puts all zeros. The destination IP address is going to be all 255s. Again, it's a broadcast. This DHCP discover message is going to be blasted out onto the LAN. Everyone on that subnet is going to get it. The source port, since it's going from client to server, the source port is going to be 68. The destination port is going to be 67. Again, this is UDP. So the client sends the DHCP discover message onto the network. Now the DHCP server is sitting on the network and it has a pool of addresses. That pool could be configured to have 10 IPs or thousands depending on how it's configured. There could also be one pool or 10 pools. So the DHCP server, it's gonna respond back to the client with an available IP address from the pool. It's basically saying, hey, I hear you that you need an IP. I I I'm the DHCP server for you. I have an IP address you can use. You can use 192.168.1.100 with a 24-bit mask. DNS server that you can use would be 192.168.1.8. Your default gateway is 192.168.1.254, and you can borrow this IP address for seven days. The layer two and layer three information for the DHCP offer looks like this. The source MAC address is going to be that of the server, which is all Bs. The destination MAC address is going to be all Fs, which is a broadcast. The source IP address is going to be that of the DHCP server. So I'll just put server here, and it's going to be the, the DHCP server's IP. The destination IP is going to be all 255s, again, a broadcast. The source and destination port, now these are going to be flipped because we're going from server to client. So the source port in this case is going to be 67. The destination port is going to be 68. The DHCP server builds this DHCP offer and sends it onto the network. The PC gets it. Now, so far up to this point, we've done two steps. We've asked for an IP and we have received an IP, but we're not done yet. You'd think we'd be done, but we're not. The reason we're not done is because in this picture, there's only one DHCP server. Maybe there's two, three, or four DHCP servers on the subnet. So when the client sends out that discover message, 
four servers get it and four servers respond. We need to let someone know, we need to let one server know that, hey, you know what, this offer that you just sent me, I really like it, so I'm gonna formally request it. And that's the purpose of the request message. You're saying, yes, I like what you just provided me and I wanna formally request it. I, I want this IP. The layer two and layer three information of the DHCP request message looks like this. Remember, it's from the client to the server, so the source MAC address is gonna be all A's, the destination MAC address is gonna be all F's, it's a broadcast. The source IP address is gonna be 0.0.0.0. .0 Again, we cannot assume the IP address until we receive the acknowledgement back, until we finish the DHCP four-step handshake, that DORA process. Until that's complete, we cannot assume the IP. So I'm gonna put 0000. The destination IP in this case is gonna be all 255s. Again, it's a broadcast. The source port and destination port are going to be 68 for the source and 67 for the destination. Remember, from client to server, the source port is 68. The destination port is going to be 67. So the client builds that DHCP request message and sends it onto the LAN. The DHCP server gets it and initiates step four, which is the final step, the acknowledgement. The purpose of the DHCP acknowledgement message is basically saying, excellent, that following IP that you like is yours, the 192.168.1.100 slash 24 mask, DNS server of 192.168.1.8, and a default gateway of 192.168.1.254, and you can borrow this for seven days. This is officially yours, it's on the books, you get it, no one else is gonna get it, you can borrow it for seven days, no problem. It builds the acknowledgement packet in the layer two and layer three information of the DHCP acknowledgement looks like this. The source MAC address is gonna be the MAC address of the server, which is all Bs. Destination MAC address is all Fs, this is a broadcast. Source IP address. Source IP address is going to be the IP of the DHCP server. So I'm just going to put SRV for server. The destination IP is going to be all 255s. Remember, this is a broadcast. Source port is going to be reversed now. It's going to be sourcing from port 67. Destination port is going to be UDP port 68. Now, once the client gets the acknowledgement from the DHCP server, it's going to take all of this information here and configure its interface with that information. So this IP address, the subnet mask, it's gonna automatically put that for the interface. So now PC has an IP address of 192.168.1.100. Periodically, the client will check in with the DHCP server to renew its IP address. But at this point, it has its IP address, it's on the network, it can communicate with other devices on the network, outside of its network, on the internet, everybody's happy. Now, something I want to mention to everyone is that you can see this Wireshark capture here up top, and you can see that the whole uh, DORA process uh, taking place. And if you notice specifically in the offer and the acknowledgement message, the destination IP address is a broadcast. It's all 255s. I want to tell you that this is not the case every single time. There are cases where the destination IP address for the offer and the acknowledgement will be unicast, right? It's not going to be all 255s. And it has to do with, now this is not, probably not CCNA, uh, this is probably outside the scope of the CCNA, um, but we're going to advance DHCP. It has to do with whether or not the client sent its discover and request with the broadcast flag bit set or not. If it sends the discover message with the bit, the broadcast bit set, when the server receives that discover, it will respond with its offer to the broadcast address of all 255s. If the server receives a discover from the client and the broadcast bit is not set, it will respond via unicast to the client. And I'll show you this in detail in a little bit, so don't worry. Now, in this example, in this drawing, the client, the PC, and the DCP server, they're in the same subnet. Now, this is not the case the majority of the time. The majority of the time, the DCP server is going to be sitting somewhere in the data center, but in a different subnet than the clients are. And if they're in a different subnet, that's where the DCP relay comes in. And that's something we're going to talk about right now. All right, so now it's time to talk about the DCP relay, aka the IP helper. And this is going to be used when the DCP server is in a different subnet than the clients. So if you look here on the left, I have a client subnet 192.168.10.0 slash 24. I have a server subnet 192.168.20.0 slash 24. And in this subnet, there's a DHCP server with 192.168.20.200 for an IP. This DHCP server also has three pools configured. 
On the client side, in the middle, we have router R1, and this G0 slash 1 interface is going to be the default gateway for the client subnet. The only configuration that this interface has so far is just going to be the IP address 192.168.10.254. Now, let's see what happens when the host over here wants to obtain a IP address via DHCP and the DHCP server is on a different subnet, right? So we know we need to finish the Dora process. So our discover is going to be sent from the client onto the LAN. And remember, it's a broadcast. So the destination IP address is all 255s. The destination MAC address is all Fs. What do switches do when they receive an uh, Ethernet frame with a destination MAC of all Fs? They're going to forward out of every single port except the one it arrived on. When that message arrives on router one's G0 slash one interface, what do routers do with broadcast? They're going to drop it, right? So if it gets dropped, that message never makes it to the DHCP server. The DHCP server never hands out an IP to the client. And remember what I said earlier that if you don't have an IP address that you're pretty much useless. That's where the DHCP relay comes in. And I call it AKA the IP helper because that's literally the name of the command. That's the command we're going to use. And that command is going to be placed on the actual interface that's the default gateway for the subnet. So interface gig zero slash one, its only configuration is the IP address. We're going to make a change. We're going to add IP helper address, and we need to specify an address. And the address that we specify is going to be that of the DHCP server. So we're going to put 192.168.20.254. Now that we have an IP helper configured on the default gateway, right, that layer three interface, let's look at the Dora process again. So we're going to start, we're going to send our discover message, right? We're on step one, discover. That switch is going to get it. It's going to forward it at every interface except the one it arrived on. When it arrives on gig zero slash one of router R1, the router is going to forward that via unicast over to the DHCP server. And when I say via unicast, I mean that the source IP address is going to be the IP address of the default gateway. So 192.168.10.254. The destination IP address is going to be the IP address of the DHCP server, which in our case is 192.168.20.200. The DHCP server gets this and it sees a source IP address of 192.168.10.254. It knows that since the discover came from 192.168.10, it knows which pool it should be handing out an IP address from. If for some reason the source IP was 192.168.11.254, then the DHCP server would see that and it would know it needs to hand out an IP from the 192.168.11 pool. The DHCP server received it. It knows exactly what pool it needs to obtain an IP address from. It's going to go ahead and send the offer, step two. What the DHCP server is going to do is it's going to send that offer message with a source IP address of itself. So 192.168.20.200. The destination IP address is going to be the IP address of that default gateway. So 192.168.10.254. That DHCP server is going to send the offer via unicast to router R1. Once router R1 receives the offer from the DHCP server, it's going to forward it out of its gig 0 slash 1 interface as a broadcast. So that message is going to arrive at the switch. The switch is going to send it out of every port except the one it arrived on. It's going to arrive back on the host. Now the client received the offer and it likes what it sees. It likes the IP that the DHCP server is offering, the subnet mass gateway. It wants to formally request that and that's where the request portion of Dora comes in. So what happens is the host will send its request to the switch. Again, this message is a broadcast message. It will go to every port except the one it arrived on. When it arrives on the gig zero slash one interface of router R1, since router R1 is configured with an IP helper, it will forward that message to the DHCP server via unicast. When it does, the source and destination will be flipped. So the source is going to be the IP address of the default gateway. So 192.168.10.254. The destination IP address is going to be the IP address of the DHCP server. 192.168.20.200. At this point, the DHCP server has received the request. 
and the DHCP server is going to go ahead and send an acknowledgement back to the client. This is the A in DOOR, the acknowledgement. When this happens, the DHCP server will send a message and the source and destination IP address will be flipped. The source is going to be 192.168.20.200. The destination IP address is going to be 192.168. Dot 10 dot that message is going to go from the DHCP server over to router R1. When router R1 gets it, it's going to forward it out of its G0 slash 1 interface onto the LAN as a broadcast. That message will arrive on the switch. The switch will forward it out of every single port except the one it arrived on. When the host gets it, the acknowledgement process is complete. The host will then take that IP address information and configure it on its network interface. So you can see how using a DHCP relay and configuring an IP helper under the interface will help us get those DHCP messages across routers. Now at this point, the client has an IP address and it can connect to other devices on the network. It can connect out to the internet and everyone is happy. All right, everyone, we are finally ready for the configuration portion of this video. So far, we've talked about the theory of how a client asks a DHCP server uh, for an IP, right? That four step process that discover, offer, request, and acknowledge. We talked about what happens when the DHCP server is in a different subnet from the client and you need to use an IP uh, relay, the IP helper. Uh, now it's time to put it all into action on the command line. So if you look in the upper right hand corner, you see our topology that we have here. We have two subnets. On the left, we have a client subnet. 192.168.10.0/24, and on the right we have a server subnet 192.168.20.0/24. The DHCP server's IP is 192.168.20.200, and we have some tasks that we need to do. Basically, the PC that's on the left needs to get an IP address from the DHCP server on the right, which is router R2. Now it's a Cisco router that's going to be running DHCP. So if we look at our task, our task is to configure R2 as a DHCP server as specified. We're going to create a pool and we're going to name that pool client-subnet1. The range for that pool is 192.168.10.1 through 254. The domain name for that pool is going to be net, uh, networkengineerpro.com. The DNS server is going to be 8.8.8.8. .8 Default router is 192.168.10.254. We're going to exclude two IP addresses from the pool. We're going to exclude 192.168.10.8 because that's a server that we don't want to have uh, that IP handed out. And we're going to exclude 192.168.10.254. If you look at router R1 in the middle, that gigabit 0 slash 1 interface, that's the default gateway for the client subnet. And that's that .254 IP address. And since it's an IP on an interface on a router, we don't want to hand it out to clients via DHCP. Then we're going to configure router one to act as a DHCP relay for that client subnet pool. And then we're going to make sure that the client gets an IP from the pool and it can ping its default gateway. Like I said, we have our PC on the left. Let's first, before we configure anything, let's verify on that PC what the current state of its network configuration is. So it's Windows 10 and I'm going to open up the command prompt and I'm just simply going to type IP config. This IP here that it has, this 169.254, this is what Microsoft gives you when you cannot get an IP from a DHCP server. It gives you this 169. It's called an APIPA uh, address. This is a sign that we definitely need to configure DHCP because this is not the IP that we should be seeing. I'm on router 2, the, the, the router that's going to be acting as a DHCP server. What I want to do is I want to first configure the excluded IPs. Those two IPs that need to be excluded, that 192.168.10.8 and 192.168.10.254, I want to exclude those first because I don't want to build my pool and have those IPs accidentally get handed out and uh, I want to go ahead and exclude them first. So let's do IP DHCP excluded address and if you press question mark you can enter the IP address that you want to have excluded. So I'm going to exclude 192.168.10.8. I'm going to hit up arrow backspace and I'm going to put 254. I've just excluded those two IPs so we've taken care of one of the tasks that we need to do. The next step is to go ahead and create the pool. So we're going to say IP DHCP pool hit question mark. Now you're going to give the pool name and according to our task we need to name it client dash subnet one. Now, after you create the DHCP pool and name it, you need to give it a range. You need to specify a range of IPs to be handed out to the clients. So to do that, you say network and our network is going to be 192.168.10.0. And if you hit space and question mark, you can enter the subnet mask or the prefix length by entering 255.255.255.0 .255 .255 .0, 
or you can just say slash 24. I'm just gonna keep it simple and say slash 24. So now my pool has been named and a range has been created. Next, for the pool, we need to give it a domain name to hand out to the client. So we're gonna say networkengineerpro.com. Our DNS server is gonna be 8.8.8.8. The default router or the default gateway that we want our clients to know about is gonna be 192.168.10.254. Our DNS server, oops, I already did that. So all of these options that we just configured here, when the client sends that discover to the server and the server responds with the offer, that offer is gonna contain the domain name, it's gonna contain the DNS server, uh, the default gateway for the client to use. This information is also included in the acknowledgement message from the server to the client as well. So it looks like we're done on the DHCP server. Now we need to configure router one as a DHCP relay. Right, but I didn't specify what interface to configure the IP helper on. On router one, we have two choices. We have gigabit zero slash one, and we have gigabit zero slash two. I didn't specify it on purpose because I want everyone to think about it and, and, and answer this themselves. What interface should the IP helper be created on? And if you're having a hard time thinking about it, or if you're not sure, the client, right, that subnet that the client's on, the gateway for that subnet, that's where you want to put the helper on. Because where's that broadcast hitting? It's hitting that gigabit zero slash one interface and it's getting dropped. So we're going to put it on that layer three, that default gateway interface. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's go to config T and we're going to go into interface gig zero slash one and we're going to say IP helper, oops, IP helper address. And remember this IP helper address is going to be the IP address of the DHCP server. So 192.168.20.200. And that should be it. Let's go look on the workstation. Actually, what I want to do really quick, I want to enable some debugs on the DHCP server because I want to see when these messages come in from the client or if they come in at all. A good debug to do when you're practicing is debug IP DHCP server. And we want to say packets. We want to see these packets when they come in. All right, so we have our debugs running. Let's go back onto the Windows 10 PC. And we're just gonna do IP config space slash renew. Let's go ahead and renew and try and get an IP address. We're gonna send our discover again. All right, perfect. So you can see that we have some uh, we have some some good good news. We have an IP 192.168.10.1. My subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. My default gateway is 192.168.10.254. I was handed all of this information from the DHCP server. Those are all those little options we configured on the pool. And you can see our DNS suffix, our networkengineerpro.com. If I do IP config space slash all, I can see the DHCP server, that 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 that we specified. It's telling us our DHCP server is 192.168.20.200 and everything looks really good. All right, so let's go back to our debugs really quick on router two, the one acting as the DHCP server, because we never got to look at that. So let's look for the discover. So this is the discover that it received from the client. Here's the MAC address that it received uh, from the client, and it received it from relay 192.168.10.254. Again, this is the default gateway for that client subnet that we configured the IP helper address on. After the discover comes the offer. The DHCP server sent the offer to the client with this IP, 192.168.10.1. The client was happy with that offer and it sent its request. The client sent its request saying, yes, I like that IP, I wanna formally request it. And again, it's gonna tell you the MAC address of what the client is. And then after the DHCP server received the request, it's gonna go ahead and send an acknowledgement. And again, this is the final step. Yes, you for sure have this IP on the books, on the record, you can borrow it your lease time today, check in with me if you wanna renew, blah, 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 blah. And I wanna show you, lastly, some helpful show commands when you're working with DHCP on Cisco devices. So we can start by show IP DHCP binding, right? You can see all of the bindings that the DHCP server has, and you can see that it binded 192.168.10.1. Here's the MAC address information, and it was automatic. Um, another good helpful command is gonna be show IP DHCP server statistics. This is telling us that we have one pool. This is statistics about the server. You know, what messages has the server received and what has it sent? So we have one automatic binding. That's that first initial client. And you can see that we have received two offers and two requests. And we have sent two offers and two acknowledgements. I'm sorry, I said offer up here. We have received two discovers 
and two requests, and we have sent two offers and two acknowledgements. So this is a very good uh, troubleshooting show command because if you configure DHCP properly and you're not receiving any discovers, then you need to start troubleshooting. Another command I like to do is show IP DHCP pool. Just a little bit of information about the pool, the utilization. You know, if you have every IP being used via DHCP, it's going to show you whether or not that, that utilization mark is high or not. Um, we have one least address, and here's the pool range, 192.168.10.1, all the way to 192.168.10.254. So you can see DHCP is not hard to configure, and it's actually kind of fun. So the very last thing I want to show you, I want to show you a Wireshark capture because I was capturing on that Windows 10 machine, and I just want to show you the exchange of the messages from Wireshark's perspective. I'm specifying DHCP, so you can see that the workstation or the client PC, it sent that discover message. Here's the source and destination information. And you can see when you expand this dynamic configuration, dynamic host configuration protocol uh, message info, you can see here that this boot P flag, this is what I was talking about earlier. This, this is set to one. What happens is, is that when a client sends a discover with this bit set, the server is going to respond via broadcast for the offer and the acknowledgement. If I were to go into the registry settings on the Windows 10 computer and change this to not be set, then I would get this offer and an acknowledgement sent back to me via unicast. Now from the DHCP server to router R1, if we look at our diagram here, let me shrink this a little bit from router R2, the DHCP server to router R1, these messages are being returned via unicast from router R1 back onto the client subnet. It's getting broadcasted onto the LAN. And you know what? I'll go ahead. I'll go on the Windows 10 machine and I'm going to go ahead and change this to not be set so we can see the difference in the unicast messages from the DHCP server for the offer and the acknowledgement. So let's go on Windows 10 and there is a specific registry set registry setting. Hang on. OK, it's going to be this one here. DHCP connect force broadcast flag. Right now it's set to one. I'm going to change it to zero so that it's not set. Now I said it, I do need to restart the PC. Let me restart it. All right, so I fast forwarded it so you don't have to see the, the computer restart. So let's go ahead and let's go back to our command prompt. Let's see if we have an IP via DHCP. Let me do a quick release and renew. Okay, here's the capture after we set the broadcast flag on the Windows 10 PC to zero, to not be set. And if we look at this initial discover message, here is the last uh, Dora process exchange here. Um, if we expand the dynamic host configuration protocol part of the capture, expand boot P flags, you're going to see that this broadcast flag is not set. When you turn it off, when you turn it off to zero, that means it's not set. So the DCP server received the discover with this bit not set. It replied via unicast. Now it replies via unicast from the DHCP server to the relay, which is the gateway, but from the gateway onto the subnet, you can see that offer message came from the gateway, which is 192.168.10.254 directly to the client. It's not a broadcast anymore. Look at, look at this first one here. The first one was a discover. The broadcast bit was set. We got a reply that was a destination as a broadcast. So we got broadcasted to everyone on the land. And a lot of like older operating systems, they used to set the, they, they, they used to have this bit set, but why do you need to broadcast it? Why do you need to broadcast the offer and the acknowledgement back onto the land? Right? It's a lot more efficient to turn this off and allow the gateway or the DHCP server to send these two messages, the offer and acknowledgement back via unicast. And I'll include a, um, a link to the registry setting that you can change if you want to practice this yourself and look at the different Wireshark captures. And when you look at the offer message, you can see everything you configured on that DHCP pool on router two. You can see, look, you have a default uh, lease time of a day. You have your subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. The domain name we configured was networkengineerpro.com. Domain server is going to be 8.8.8.8.8. The router or default gateway is 192.168.10.254. And again, that's all of the parameters you configured on your pool. Those are being sent to the client from the server. Once the, ser once the client gets that acknowledgement back, it's going to go ahead and program its network interface card with all of these settings and parameters.
All right, so we configured a router to act as a DHCP server. We configured a DHCP relay by using the IP helper address command, and we verified that the client receives an IP from the configured DHCP pool and that it could ping its default gateway. I really hope that everyone enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to follow me on social media, I put links to Facebook and Instagram pages down in the description. All right, I hope everyone learned something. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next video.